Welcome back. This is part two of my three-part series all about ELTs. This one in particular, installation. As always, I'm pretty excited. Another chapter in my adventures. This one, installing the ELT 345 from Artex. If you're interested in the uh, the first part of the series all about ELTs, I'll put a link right there in the top left. Click on that. And then at the end of this video, I'll do a link also in the top left corner, all about testing ELTs. If you uh, stay to the end, I'll leave a little bonus. I'll include a lot of pictures from the installation and the build for you guys to go over and look at and pick apart as you often do. Uh, yeah, that'll be at the end. Just a quick note, this video, I've done a lot of the work uh, behind the scenes to minimize the length of the video. And what do I mean by that? Well, there was a lot of thinking, planning, and fabricating of parts, brackets, wiring, and harness, and all that stuff. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. I'll include pictures and clips here and there throughout the video, but for the most part, this is gonna be an abbreviated install so that you're not watching me for hours and hours trying to figure all this stuff out. As always, just looking through the kit here, everything is nicely packaged from Artex. You'll notice that my harness is already built up and I already have my switch somewhat set up for the panel. I made a mount already. This is the factory tray that it comes with. I went and made brackets that will attach to the aircraft. This is the ELT itself, some paperwork and some small bags and the antenna that's included with the kit. Instruction manual is not included. It is available to view online or print as desired. In my case, I printed it out just so that I have reference and I can put it with the aircraft file and also show you guys a little bit as I'm doing the build. There's a lot of information here. It's so oh, like 60 pages or so of information and it goes through everything from what's included description operation introduction to elts test and fault isolation inspection checklists for removal installation wiring parts list registration everything you need to know about ELTs, okay, moving right along. Some of the things to expect in terms of the kit, the types of switches, the mounting tray, the buzzer, the battery, the antenna types that you could get depending on how you ordered your kit. Any 406 ELT must be registered. I'll put a link in the description to that. Make sure you register your beacon before you install it. There's also an interesting note here. Many original ELT installations are inadequate as far as unit location and surface rigidity are concerned. The mounting surface must be extremely rigid. Mounting an ELT directly to an aircraft skin, for example, is unacceptable. And there's some really good guidelines here from the RTCA. Um, specifically, the unit shall be mounted to primary aircraft load carrying structures, such as trusses, bulkheads, laundry on spars, or floor beams, not aircraft skin or, or big or, structure that meets the requirements of the following tests. And then they go in to describe a mount having a maximum static load deflection no greater than two and a half millimeters when a force of 450 newtons or 100 foot pounds is applied to the mount in the most flexible direction. I did this. Deflection measurements, blah, 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 and it goes in to really explain it. Um, there's more about this, I'll, I'll put a link in and. You can read all about RTCA DO204A subsection 318, but I'm not gonna bore you anymore. Long story short, I complied with all this and it's not too hard to do as long as you're mounting it in a strong enough structure. And there's another note. Statistics show the tail section of the airplane is likely to be less damaged during a crash, therefore providing a good mounting environment for the ELT. But if you notice here, it also says, mount the ELT as far aft as practical, but where it can be easily retrieved for maintenance. ELT that I removed from this airplane was pretty far aft. It was all the way back in the very tail of the airplane. I mean, I had to crawl all the way into the tail of the airplane, remove the old one, and wiggle myself out backwards uphill because it's a tail dragger. So, is that practical? Uh, no, I, I didn't think that was practical. So here's what I did. Now, originally there was, from the factory, there were radios mounted here. You can see the holes in the floor where the original nut plates were used to mount aircraft radios or avionics. And I used the aftmost location, utilizing the floor structure and these, well, I use six mounts, two for the uh, tray and two for the buzzer tray that I fabricated. So yeah, let's get into that more. Install the necessary mounting structure as appropriate. 
align the mounting tray on the mounting structure so that the arrow is pointing within 10 degrees of the aircraft. That's pretty simple. Hold up, I didn't even show you what airplane this is going in. This ELT is going in the snow dog. This is a 1951 Cessna L1901 bird dog. One of my favorite airplanes. This particular example is no exception. She gets nothing but the best. Let's go put the tray in. So after a whole lot of debate, this was the location that I ended up choosing. It was a compromise, like many things, between location, structural strength, serviceability, and utilizing existing holes in the airplane. I'm not the biggest fan when it comes to drilling new holes in an old airplane. Sometimes you just gotta do it, but if it's avoidable, I prefer to use what's there. Also, there's a note in AC4313 that talks about using existing structure and nut plates, if available. So, yeah, this was available. I thought that was pretty neat. Believe it or not, when I was making these mounts or these rails, whatever you want to call them, I went through several iterations and several different idea concepts before I selected what ended up being the final design. Originally, I thought maybe I would use square tubing and taper the ends, and that turned out to be problematic because I couldn't come up with a good way to mount the screws or the hardware from underneath. And then I found some C-channel, came up with some ideas which actually ended up working. It took me still a couple tries before I really settled on the design. But in the end, I'm very happy with the way it came out. It looks pretty simple, but at the end of the day, a lot of thought went into it. Not to mention a lot of effort, cutting and shaping, fabricating the pieces needed to make everything just fit right. And then of course, testing it with a, a force gauge to make sure that it met the requirements the RTCA uh, between that and AC4313. It was pretty clear the way they wanted these things installed. Install the mounting tray as shown in figure 13. The use of substitute mounting hardware is acceptable provided the hardware used meets or exceeds the strength and corrosion resistance of the original hardware. Check. Let's go see how it fits. Uh-oh, I see a problem. I might need to move that bracket forward a little bit because I don't think the uh, connector is going to clear right there. Or I might need to adjust that. Crisis averted. Made a new bracket for the buzzer. Got plenty of clearance. And one of the reasons I like it being tucked over here in the corner, it adds some protection. You know, in case anything slides under the seat or the baggage compartment, it's not totally exposed. It's kind of tucked out into the side, so yeah. Okay, moving on to the antenna. The ELT will not work without the proper antenna being connected for which it was designed. So use the one that was supplied in the kit. My old location was pretty far aft and the skin oil can when you push on it. So when you look at the requirements of RTCA and also 4313, there's some very specific requirements about how the antenna is installed, particularly making sure it's 32 inches approximately away from other VHF antennas. Pretty straightforward, the antenna just gets mounted to the airframe. Install a doubler plate if necessary, which wasn't necessary here. 20 pound force applied to the antenna in all directions should not cause appreciable distortion in the aircraft skin. That was not the case previously. Install a ground plane, not necessary because it's a metal airplane. Drill an antenna mounting hole. I already had one, I'm just removing a cap and relocating it. Mount the antenna, apply a small amount of RTV sealant around the base to protect against moisture. And then a coax cable is provided. Pretty straightforward here. Next up is the remote switch. So in my case, I had to fabricate a little mounting plate to go on the panel. It was kind of a, kind of an ordeal. Let me show you. So I had this hole in the panel where the old switch was mounted. And originally I thought that this switch would just get mounted to the back of that hole and make a nice little cover plate from behind. But that's an odd size hole. It's not your standard two and a quarter. It's a, uh, it's a two inch hole for some of these old military gauges. Because of the placard or the, the sticker that came with this, I ended up making a plate 
to cover the hole from the front and that's basically what it's going to look like don't uh don't destroy me too bad in the comments on that one so the elt must be installed using a two wire switch there's two options there's the standard switch or the slimline switch in my case i ended up going with the slimline switch which uh We'll just take up less less panel space. Mark the cutout, fit the switch into the cutout, mark the screw holes, remove the switch, drill the holes, install the switch. For the slimline switch, install the operation label included. They give you both horizontal and vertical options. I started with the horizontal and I messed that up. So now I'm going with the vertical, but it's uh, horizontal. So next thing I need to do is the buzzer. The buzzer may be located anywhere in the aircraft. However, the recommended location is near the ELT. Refer to AC4313 for fabrication and insulation guidance. That's what the buzzer looks like. That's the old bracket. We already saw the new one. Let's go put that in. It's just gonna go into this bracket right here, right in front of the tray. Panel nut or retaining nut that's just gonna go to the front of it. These two wires are gonna go into the harness. Next up is the wiring. It's pretty straightforward. Some guidance here, minimum 22 gauge wire size shielding is recommended to prevent emi and rf interference use high quality conductors meeting mil specs pretty standard aircraft stuff provide a drip loop provide a service loop refer to the following schematics pretty standard 15 pin d sub connector there's the wiring go ahead and solder all this stuff up and make the connector sub connector all populated building up the back shell and putting it together harness all fabricated i can go ahead and route it in the airplane and get it set up so that i can crimp the female pins on for the molex connector which will be like that and that'll be the pin out Now that I got the panel switch all hooked up, I'm just gonna do a quick test. Quick push. One beep, that means everything checks out, including position data. Mounting the panel switch was pretty straightforward. There's two wires that go into the switch and then a third wire for the GPS. At first I was having a hard time getting the GPS to send its data or position to the ELT. It turned out all I needed to do was make sure that I had a ground wire coming off the GPS. Once I had my GPS grounded, it completed the circuit and the uh, ELT test worked out just fine, so. Well, that's about it. Aside from cleaning up some of the wires and zip ties and stuff behind the panel, this ELT is installed and it's working and everything's good. I'm still gonna run a test and do all the normal 91207 ELT checks. That's gonna be in a different video. You can click on that up here top left corner testing ELTs. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. A lot of fun putting this together. Really happy with this product. Artex has been great. Every airplane that we have has the Artex 345 in it. So can't really go wrong. You know what you're getting. High quality ELT. I mean, it's what I'm flying with in airliners. Not the 345, I'm sure, but I'm sitting there flying my jet along and I look down and it's like, oh, there's a little Artex uh, switch for the ELT. So, I mean, that tells me something. These guys are, they're doing something right. Anyways, thanks for watching. Check out the other videos. Again, let me know what you think. Always look forward to the comments. Good, bad, whatever, uh, you know, welcome all. And if you haven't already, consider uh, subscribing. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one.